Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis, your favorite medical channel, and we continue talking about pulmonology. In the previous video, we actually talked about respiratory acidosis and respiratory alkalosis. Today, we'll talk about oxygen delivery to tissue and the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. This is going to be a very brief discussion, but if you need more information, there is a video on my channel called Oxygen Content and Oxygen Saturation, so please check it out to learn more. With that being said, now let's get started. So this is the title and the thumbnail of the video that I recommend, Oxygen Content and Oxygen Saturation. By the way, now I have some premium videos that are not available on my YouTube channel. Go to patreon.com slash medicosis and click on videos premium and you will get them. So here's the whole story. You breathe the air in, air has oxygen, goes to the lung. Then the arterial blood jumps on the hemoglobin. Now oxygen is in the tissue. Carbon dioxide on the hemoglobin carbon dioxide in the venous blood, lungs, breathe out the CO2. Now let's call them names. Oxygen or the fraction of oxygen in the atmosphere is FiO2. In the lung, it's P big AO2, big A for alveolar. In the arterial blood, P small a, small a for artery. On the hemoglobin, this is oxygen saturation. And then CO2 on the hemoglobin, the venous blood, PV CO2 or PVO2, if you want to measure the oxygen in the veins, or if you want to measure the CO2 in the veins, doesn't matter. Goes to the lung and CO2. As you know, oxygen constitutes 21% of the atmospheric air. Fraction of oxygen in the atmospheric air is 21%. Oxygen goes to the alveoli, then the pulmonary capillary. Why? Because it's high pressure to low pressure. Partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli is P big AO2. Partial pressure of oxygen in the capillary is P small AO2. By capillary here, I mean arterial blood. Normally, this is around 104, 105. This is around 95 to 100. That's why there is an AA gradient, as we have discussed before. If you don't know what's the AA gradient, please watch my previous video called AA gradient. Now, oxygen and the arterial blood jumps on the hemoglobin. It's called saturation or percent saturation of oxygen or SAO2. Normally, this is 97%. If I say 96%, I'm not going to panic. But if it decreases to 90%, um, this is bad news. Do you know why? Because as the saturation decreases from 97% to 90%, the P, small a, O2, has decreased from 100 to 60, which is not so good. That's why the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve has an S shaped because just any teeny tiny change in the saturation is equivalent to a huge reduction in the P small a O2. The arterial blood gas is really important because it can help you measure all of this crazy stuff. Oxygen content measures the total amount of oxygen in the carried blood. Remember this is total. Oxygen content equals Hemoglobin concentration plus P small AO2 in the arterial blood plus SAO2 oxygen that's on the hemoglobin. By the way, this is not a mathematical equation. Don't just get this number and add it to this number and then add this number. No, 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 no. I'm just giving you an idea. It's a theory. The oxygen content depends on three things. Hemoglobin concentration, oxygen, partial pressure in the arterial blood, and the oxygen saturation, which is on the hemoglobin. Problem here is called anemia. Problem here is called hypoxemia, and problem here is called decreased oxygen saturation. So here's the whole story. Oxygen comes from the lung into the arterial blood, called P small AO2. Then it jumps on the hemoglobin, called SAO2. And of course, it depends on the hemoglobin concentration. If you have less hemoglobin, you will have less oxygen content. That's why in cases of anemia, PAO2 is normal, SAO2 is normal, but the hemoglobin concentration is decreased. So what's going to happen to the oxygen content? Decreased. That's anemia. Decreased total red blood cell mass and therefore decreased the hemoglobin concentration. But the PaO2 and SaO2 are normal. Therefore, the oxygen content is going to decrease. Oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve, also known as oxygen binding curve or oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve or oxygen hemoglobin binding curve. I don't care. It looks like an S shape. Here we're talking about at the level of the lung. At the level of the lung, oxygenated blood leaves the alveoli and jump on the hemoglobin, increasing the PaO2 and the SaO2. But here at the tissue, you want to release the oxygen quickly to the tissue. So oxygen is going to leave the blood and the hemoglobin and it's going to enter into the cell. Here we're talking about oxygen binding. Here we're talking about oxygen dissociation. Binding is opposite to dissociation. 
Some people refer to binding as affinity, close, but they are not the same. But all of these are opposite to dissociation or unloading. So here is unloading, here is loading. Shifting the curve to the right. Okay, now get a constant amount of PaO2 and go up the curve, up the curve. If you see the blue one has less oxygen saturation than the black one, which means when we shift the curve to the right, we are decreasing the oxygen saturation. Translation, oxygen is leaving the hemoglobin and going into the tissue. With right shift, you are giving oxygen to the tissue. Again, the same curve, let's shift it to the left. So the normal curve is the black one and the one that's shift to the left is the red one. Let's take a constant amount of PaO2 and go upwards. The black one has lesser saturation than the red one. The red one has increased saturation. What do you mean uh, increased saturation? I mean the hemoglobin is more saturated with oxygen. Is this means loading or unloading? This is loading. So you are keeping the oxygen on the hemoglobin and not giving it to the tissue. With left shift, the tissue is left behind. Shifters of the oxygen dissociation curve shift to the right and shift to the left. What shifts the oxygen dissociation curve to the right? Increase PCO2, increase hydrogen ion concentration, which is going to lead to decreased pH. Don't tell anybody. Increase temperature, increase altitude, increase 2,3 dpg. Shifters to the left, decrease PCO2, decrease hydrogen, decrease temperature, decrease altitude, and decrease 2,3 dpg. It's the exact opposite of this. But then we add two things, hemoglobin F and met hemoglobin. Hemoglobin F is the fetal hemoglobin because the baby wants to take all of the oxygen from mommy because the baby doesn't have any working lungs. His lungs are useless as long as he's in the womb. So he has hemoglobin F. Hemoglobin F will shift his oxygen dissociation curve to the left so that he binds the oxygen himself. He decreases the unloading and increases the loading so that he can take all of the oxygen from mommy and keep it to himself so that he can survive. Imagine that you are exercising the right arm only while the left arm is resting. Now, let me ask you this. Which arm should get more oxygen, the right arm or the left arm? If you say, oh, I believe in equality and equal distribution. I believe that every arm should get an equal amount of oxygen regardless. That's how you end up with pale necrosis. Thank God the decision is not up to you. <laughs> I'm joking. Back to medicine. Which arm should get more oxygen, the right arm or the left arm? Even grandma would say the right arm needs more, and she's absolutely right. Why? Because when you exercise your right arm, you're increasing temperature in your right arm. You're increasing metabolism in your right arm, and therefore increasing PCO2, a product of metabolism, which in turn is going to increase hydrogen ion concentration called acidosis, thanks to carbonic anhydrase. Also, you're increasing glycolysis because you need more energy. You're burning sugar, which is going to produce 2,3 dpg as a byproduct of glycolysis. All of these factors will shift the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve to the right, increasing the release, the giving of oxygen from the hemoglobin to the tissue. With right shift, we are giving oxygen we are to the tissue. Okay, let's talk about your left arm. Your left arm is the opposite. The left arm has left shift and increased in affinity and decrease in oxygen release to the tissue because you do not need it. Because the first law of economics is the law of scarcity. We have a limited number of resources, I mean oxygen. Therefore, we need to economize. We will give more oxygen to the exercising arm and less oxygen to the resting arm. Now, you might like Caesar salad or you might hate Caesar salad, but the hemoglobin is different. It doesn't just hate oxygen or love oxygen. The hemoglobin says, it depends. If you shift me to the right, I will hate oxygen and give it all to the tissue. But if you shift me to the left, I will change my mind and love oxygen instead and keep it to myself. Some poetry. I bargain with life for a penny, and life would pay no more. However, I begged at evening, when I counted my scanty store. For life is a just employer, he gives you what you ask. But once you have set the wages, why, you must bear the task. I worked for a menial's hire, only to learn dismayed, that any wage I had asked from life, life would have willingly paid. 
Let's change this to fit our agenda of medicine. I bargain with life for a penny, I mean oxygen, but the hemoglobin would pay no more. But then, hemoglobin is a just employer. He gives you what you ask. Just shift it to the right baby and he will give you all the oxygen that you need. But once you have set the wages and shifted to the left, why, you must bear the task. Any wage that I've asked from life, life would have willingly paid. If you're struggling with life, I mean to learn about Legionella, Mycoplasma, Pseudomonas, and Rhinovirus, check out this website it's called Picmonic. They have pictured mnemonics. See the link in the description below. They are not a sponsor of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and join the tribe. Hit the bell to get notified. Follow me on Facebook. I have more than 100 cases there. You can get all of my cases, all of my premium videos, all of my notes, all of my audio notes at patreon.com slash medicosis. Also, I have one-on-one -on -one courses. If you want me to call you personally and explain those crazy medical topics for you, my pleasure. I would be honored. Thank you so much for watching. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard.